So guys, we are finally doing our deep dive for Necrochasm. We did our first impressions the other day, but that was right after a very, very long stream. But after a few days, we spent a lot of time with this auto rifle and really just filling things out. So some questions I want to answer today. Number one, is this weapon any good? And number two, how the hell does Bungie expect people to get this weapon when Overso Essences and their drop rate is so low? First up, we did put out a guide on how to get it if you did not get it during contest mode. But as far as Overso Essences, I don't know, fellas. The drop rate for that is just terrible. I did an entire run of Crota's End just yesterday, and we got one over so essence. So between the triumphs and the very low essence drops, yes, it's going to take a while to get this exotic unless Bungie buffs that drop rate, which is why the question, is this any good, is an extremely important question to answer, considering the time commitment. Now, first up, let's go over how Necrochasm works inside of Destiny 2. And yes, it is different than its D1 version. Necrochasm is now a 720 round per minute auto rifle where it was previously a 900 round per minute auto rifle back in destiny one now some players of course are a bit disappointed by this we thought that maybe this would be the first 900 round per minute auto rifle inside of destiny we even thought that bungie may have brought it back as an smg but that's not the case it was just dropped down to a 720 it's also a kinetic weapon whereas back in d1 it was an arc weapon granted though it synergizes with arc which we're going to get into in just a moment as well as the rate of fire changes with this weapon. But one thing to take note about Necrochasm is that it is a weapon of sorrow, as in it does synergize with things like Necrotic Grips. Now, what this means is that this falls under the same umbrella as weapons like Thorn and Osteostruga. And the synergy that Necrotic Grips has with those exotics is an extremely unique one. And it's really nice to see not just Necrochasm, but many of the weapons from the raid synergize here. Now, when we look at the perks here, intrinsically, Necrochasm comes with the trait curse bringer which reads precision final blows with this weapon trigger a curse thrall explosion and final blows with the curse ball explosion refills the magazine now this perk was its main trait back inside of destiny one and i would say that the explosion here is more potent inside of d2 it's much bigger it's great at clearing out ways of ads and it can chain react as in if you get a kill with the curse thrall explosion it can continuously keep doing so and in that process it can auto reload the weapon where the difference is between the D1 version and the D2 version of Necrochasm is really the fact that inside of D2, it requires precision hits or precision kills. Whereas inside of D1, it was just simply kills with the weapon would trigger that cursed thrall explosion. And considering the rate of fire of the weapon, most people are like spam shooting 720 round per minute autos. Like imagine Rufus, right? Not saying you're not going for precision hits, but I'm like treating it like an SMG. It just has a deeper magazine here. Now the other perk found on Necrochasm is called Desperation. I know, looks very similar to Desperado. And yes, it does have similar functionality, but with a twist. Desperation states that reloading after a precision final blow or a final blow with a cursed throw explosion increases your rate of fire and improves stability and aim assist. Essentially, guys, this is a souped up version of Desperado. Now, based on our frame counts, Desperation puts Necrochasm right at 900 rounds per minute. And it lasts for roughly six seconds. So for my folks upset that it's a seven. 20, you could still reach that 900 round per minute mark. Now, base time to kill value for rapid fire auto rifles shooting at 720 rounds per minute is around a 0.77 time to kill value. At 900 rounds per minute, though, for something like Necrochasm with Desperation, you're talking a 0.6 TTK value, which in comparison to like kill activated perks, this is pretty good. Now, looking at the exotic catalyst of this gun, we do not have this yet, but it's been data mine. Currently, right now, it's supposed to be outlawed. Which which of course would synergize with desperation for those times you do need to get the reload. Keep in mind though, nothing is gonna drastically change with this catalyst. The only other thing I'm holding out for is that maybe, just maybe, there's gonna be a massive stat bump here for this auto rifle with the catalyst. But again, don't hold your breath. This could very likely just be outlaw and nothing else. I do find the catalyst to be somewhat redundant considering the cursed throw explosions actually auto reload the weapon. On top of that, the base reload of the weapon is 76. And at no point through my gameplay session did I feel like the reload speed was holding me back. At the same time, faster reload is always welcomed on any weapon. Now, inside of PvE, when we tested things down by Carl, we were doing 2,885 damage per crit and 1,910 per body. This was against red bar enemies, that being miners. Against Carl himself, we're doing 1,511 per crit and 1,008 per body. Now, in terms of the curse throw explosion, against red bar enemies, its max damage was doing around 
around 32,374 damage. And this number decreases depending on how far away the target is from that explosion. Now, in addition to the explosion damage, Necrochasm also outputs its own intrinsic poison damage, which ticks for 1,141 poison damage if the target did not die from that initial curse throw explosion. Now, versus Carl, this explosion damage at max was dealing 13,190 damage and then would tick for 602 poison damage. Now, fun fact about that curse throw explosion. You remember how we mentioned earlier that Necrochasm actually does do arc damage, even though it's a kinetic weapon? That's because that curse throw explosion is what deals arc damage, which means Necrochasm's explosions can synergize with arc 3.0. For instance, on arc warlock, the curse throw explosion can trigger death throws if you're looking to do a grenade build. And you could pair this with two more arc weapons in your energy and heavy slots, or even use Necrochasm as your single arc weapon, quote unquote arc weapon, if you would like. Granted, it's completely dependent on you getting those throw explosion kills. Now, you can also use things like Mano Battle Harmony, and those cursed throw explosions are going to grant you additional super energy. But sadly, the throw explosions did not seem to get a damage bonus when super energy was full. Now, with this weapon being a kinetic weapon, it can also synergize with things like Chromatic Fire. And since the exotic is really around you landing those precision kills, this goes hand in hand with Chromatic Fire and the ability to spread even more Kabloomies. By the way, Chromatic Fire got a rework not that long ago, where depending on the subclass you rock, its effect will actually change. It's not just damage. You can get weakened for Void, Scorched for Solar, Blind for Arc, and Slow for Stasis, as well as Sever for Strand. Now, it has a number of other synergies across the board, but nothing really game-changing. We did try this weapon with Necronic Grips, though. Considering that this is a Weapons of Sorrow, the Thrall Explosion does synergize with Necronic Grips, which would then further spread and increase that poison effect. Sadly, it does not increase the damage of the poison or explosion, but granted, it does improve the effect of the explosions quite a bit. Now, we say quite a bit, but keep in mind, the synergy here is not like Osteo trigger level synergy. Like, that's nuts. Osteo is literally insane in combination for Necrotic Grips, and I would actually say that it was meant to be utilized as such. Necrochasm is more like, hey, you can if you want, but it's not necessary. Now, how does this exotic pair with other exotic auto rifles? Because, fellas, we have some major competition. Look no further than Quicksilver Storm. This is the big baddie on the block. Another 720 round per minute auto rifle. The difference here is that Quicksilver Storm is Strand, whereas Necrochasm is Kinetic. Now, using our damage values against Red Bar adds, Necrochasm has a one mag DPS of 34,380. And with Desperation, this actually kicks up to 42,975 DPS. Now, when we compare this to Quicksilver Storm, we get a one mag DPS of around 31,248. Now, the reason why there is a difference here is, number one, Necrochasm is a kinetic weapon. So it's going to be doing slightly more damage than its strand counterpart. And number two, it's kicking up to 900 rounds per minute when desperation is prox. But with that being said, the absolute powerhouse of Quicksilver Storm is those nano tracer rockets that deal an extra 10,360 damage against red bar enemies, roughly every 10 to 12 shots. On top of that, Quicksilver has its very own grenade launcher, which is able to be procced on a single target and and it's very easy to accumulate three of those grenades, which by the way, does 136,748 damage versus red bar enemies. We literally go through Nightfalls, entire Grandmaster Nightfalls with Quicksilver Storm. There's a reason why we've called it Quicksilver, which is why on paper, Quicksilver absolutely slaps Necrochasm around, no problem. But maybe we're being too harsh. Despite these weapons both being in the same archetype, that is a very tough challenge. Now, another exotic auto rifle to compare to is Monte Carlo, primarily because it just got an exotic catalyst that has finally allowed us to use Monte Carlo's bayonet. Now, the one mag DPS for Monte is 32,430 damage, so slightly less than that of Necrocastle. But when proccing Markov Chain, and especially Markov Chain times five, you're looking at roughly a max one mag DPS of 53,510 damage, which is higher than that of Necrocastle, even with desperation. And the exotic catalyst for Monte Carlo is able to dish out 157,786 damage versus red bar enemies and even 57,377 damage against enemies like Carl. Now, with all that being said, is Necrochasm a good weapon inside of PvE? Let me be clear on this. It is a good ad clearing weapon, or at least has the potential to clear a room full of ads. But when I took it into Legend Sabbath Inspire, I really saw this weapon dip off. The fiercer the competition, the more Necrochasm 
them really started to show its weakness. Don't get me wrong, guys. It's a fun weapon. You can amp it up with certain exotics, and I love desperation on this weapon. But for me and my playthrough with it, I felt like there were better options. Now, this season, we do have anti-champion auto rifle, which is great here for Necrogasm if you want to use it against champs. But again, as I'm using it, all I could think about was that Quicksilver Storm could be doing everything that Necrochasm is doing, but better. Which is why it is unfortunate that the exotic catalyst for this weapon is outlaw. This is where Bungie could have dialed Necrochasm up to hang with the fiercest of competition by also adding something very unique. Can you imagine something like Kinetic Tremors present on Necrochasm? It's got the ability to clear ads. I love that. Where it suffers though is against those meteor ads, against elites and majors, which is why that exotic catalyst being something different, something outside of just outlaw would have been amazing. Either way it goes, guys, for my PvE players, it's a fun weapon, but I would not break your back trying to get this weapon. Now, for PvP players, we talked about its TTK values, going from 0.77 at base to 0.6, and auto rifles across the board have gotten a big bump in range. With that said, though, Necrochasm's range is not good. Like, not good at all. Quicksilver Storm is definitely better, but just looking at other weapons within its archetype, you've got Sweet Star, which surpasses it in range. You've got Rufus, which with the craft roll definitely surpasses it. Even Tommy's matchbook has more range than this. The range on this weapon is actually comparable to like OG Chroma Rush. Which let me just say it was one of my favorite auto rifles back in the day. But considering the meta shift, you're starting to see auto rifles like Amit absolutely dominating the Crucible, reaching ranges up to 33 meters. Whereas Necrochasm here starts to experience damage fall off at 28 meters. Now it's okay to have range that low if the weapon is just a monster in duels. For me guys, inside of PvP, it's a fun weapon. And that's really the way I'm looking at it for both sides of the game. PvE, PvP, a fun gun. Now, let me also say this. Not every weapon in the game has to be the best of the best. That's how we get power creep. But Bungie's actually done a really good job of like rethinking exotics from D1 to D2. Necrochasm here really hasn't changed all that much outside of that cursed thrall explosion being better. And don't get me wrong, I'm glad it is better. But considering that the origin trait on all the raid weapons pretty much gives you that curse throw explosion. There really isn't a lot here that's separating itself in Necrocastle. Like what I envisioned was the ability to literally spawn a curse throw upon landing that precision kill with Necrocastle. Now that's unique, man. A lot of people are complaining that it has to be a precision kill. But imagine if you could spawn a literal curse throw and wherever you aim, that curse throw runs toward the targets. Dude, that would be nasty. That right there would make anyone jump in the raid. So guys, that is my thoughts on Necrochasm. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.